You took all these different factions of people and you brought them together and it didn't matter. There were no walls. It was like we knew each other from when we were kids. It was actually kind of just a freak coincidence. I remember um, still vividly, like it was yesterday, that um, I was going up to my room after class one day and Nate Kornblum lived across the hall from me. And I had seen him wear his letters you know, out of his room a couple times. Uh, didn't know anything about Greek communities. Actually, when I first came here, I thought that you had to be Greek to be a Greek. Well, the main reason I wanted to join was the four guys that started the chapter. Um, I knew in the Boy Scouts well before, and the two of them, you know, or the four of them, sorry, they, you know, they started this and they talked about it all the time, and I hung out with them at scouting events, and it just, it was the right fit for a social life in college for me. It was down in old Virginia where my day began. Its honor and its loyalty first took its noble stand. The unity of this fraternity can weather all storms that may come. You know, being able to be a part of an organization like that, that really you learn then early on how to be in a leadership position whether it be you know working on a committee to being a, a, a committee chair to being on e-board to being you know chapter president uh, I think that was one great thing that really led me if I have you know any any success that I've had professionally after Whitewater a good portion of that is because of what transpired being being uh, a member of, uh, of the chapter on December 6, 1998, a group of men gathered in Oshkosh, Wisconsin to celebrate the culmination of months of exhaustive work. They had come together with the common idea to form a fraternity on the campus of the University of Wisconsin-Whitewater, a fraternity that would break the mold of the Greek community and raise the standard of excellence for themselves and future generations. December 6 marked the installation of the Kappa Omega chapter of the Pi Kappa Alpha fraternity. Over the course of the next 10 years, the brothers of Kappa Omega worked to establish their identity on campus to challenge themselves and the Greek community to ever higher degrees of excellence. As with any young organization, there were growing pains. The early chapter constantly struggled to meet their own high expectations in academics, leadership, service, and accountability. The brothers also had to reconcile the evolving interests and demands of incoming undergraduates with the core values the chapter was founded on. Through all this, the brothers tried to maintain the momentum and enthusiasm the founding fathers instilled in the chapter, balancing new traditions with innovation. Our connection uh, with Chris Rogers, uh, Mike Hartwig, and Joe Freeville started in the Boy Scouts, serving on uh, camp staff. Now, while Chris was in a different council in a different area of the state, Mike Hartwig and Joe Freeville and I all served in the same summer camp staff in Keele, Wisconsin, Camp Rokalayo. And through the Boy Scouts, namely through the or the arrow side of things, our relationships formed much full, uh, much solid, and were stronger. And then um, once we had graduated. Uh, high school and started college, uh, Hartwig and I actually came to school here and then uh, became even closer friends. The origin of the Kappa Omega chapter can be traced back to the relationship of four friends who met through the Boy Scouts of America. J.J. Arnold, Mike Hartwig, Chris Rogers, and Joe Freville shared a common experience through the Boy Scouts and later at the Order of the Arrow. Most of the guys would know that there's a Boy Scout foundation that kind of underlies the whole Cap Omega, Pike, Whitewater history. Um, but for those who don't know, J.J. Uh, Arnold and I met uh, through the Boy Scouts, and the best way to describe it, it was uh, an honor society, much like high school is an honor society, the Order of the Arrow is the version of the honor society for the Boy Scouts of America. Interesting enough, I'm probably one of the few uh, members of the chapter that was a Pike before I even got to school. Um, obviously, we've got some sibling, siblings in the chapter, and you know some friends that brought high schoolers, you know, high school friends in with them. But um, I, I, I knew I was going to be a Pike. I didn't exactly know what it was or what a Pike was, but I knew I was going to be a Pike before my first day of college. A pivotal player in the foundation of the chapter was Mr. Edward Pease. 
J.J. Arnold was the starting point of the journey of Kappa Omega's founding. Arnold began his collegiate career at UW-Whitewater, but transferred to Indiana State University because of the encouragement of Ed Pease. I was actually a freshman at the University of Wisconsin-Whitewater. Okay. Uh, I was here a year and a half, transferred to Indiana State. Uh, one, had a scholarship, got a scholarship, I should say, and then also through our relationship with Mr. Ed Pease, um, went down there and uh, was a part of that university and then subsequently became an associate member at that chapter. What, um, what inspired you to, to join uh, the Pi Kappa Alpha chapter there? Actually, I wanted to have nothing to do with it, if you really, if you really look at it. I wanted, um, due to my relationship and uh, perception of the Whitewater Greek community, when I went down to Indiana State, I wanted nothing to do with it. Everybody in my house that I lived at uh, was Greek, also part of the Boy Scouts and part of Pi Ka, and I really wanted nothing to do with it from what Whitewater stood for. But through working and getting to know the guys there, as well as uh, Mr. Pease, uh, I was able to understand the true meaning of Pi Ka, as well as fraternity and what it could do for you as a person, but what purpose it serves others down the road. When he returned to Whitewater, Arnold shared his enthusiasm for Pi Kappa Alpha with his old friends, Chris Rogers and Mike Hartwig. While both had their doubts about fraternity life in general from their experiences at Whitewater, they were also encouraged by Ed Pease. Uh, then that summer of 97, we went to the National Scout Jamboree, and Ed was there again, and we actually all sat down face to face for the first time, the, uh, would be the four of us, and Ed explained why and how we could make a difference, and how it was, he showed us the relationship between the Order of the Arrow, the Scouting and Honor Society, and the fraternity, being Brotherhood of Cheerful Service. And that really struck a chord. And the whole plane ride back, Hartwig, JJ, and I talked. Of course, JJ had been on board since he got back uh, that previous spring, and we started saying, let's, let's give it a try. We can be different. We, we don't have to fit those stereotypes. There doesn't have to be hazing. There doesn't have to be all about drinking. Do we want to play hard? Yeah. We can work hard and make a difference in the community. Deciding to form a chapter on the Whitewater campus was only the first step. At the time, there was not a policy for Greek expansion, so the Founding Fathers had to struggle with the bureaucracy of the campus administration, as well as the requirements of the international fraternity. However, with the help of Ed Pease and the support of the campus, including Chancellor Greenhill, the fledgling group overcame many obstacles to establish themselves as an official colony. One of my favorite lines in the movie, and there's, there's several times in my fraternity experience that this line applies, uh, but there's a movie that remember the Titans, or not remember the Titans, um, The Replacements, with the Keanu Reeves. And as silly as a movie as it is, uh, at the very end, after the replacements have gone on the main playoffs, Gene Hackman does a voiceover. And you see the guys celebrating on the football field, holding up their helmets, um, you know, the cheerleaders are out there, and they're all celebrating, and the voiceover comes up, you know, and many of them, they know it's going to be the last game because they're replacing players and strike is over. Uh, but the voiceover that Gene Hackman comes on with is that glory, no matter how brief, stays with the man. And there's, I love that line because there's so many moments in the fraternity that I can, that that line kind of fits. And every, every time I hear that, every time I watch the movie and hear that line, instantly I'm starting to think about fraternity. And, and, chartering, and chartering banquet was one of those moments, is you would take in seven months of cold, hard, blood, sweat, tears, it's amazing to see 86 strangers come together, unite so quickly with one cause, one goal, and to see that movement, just, just that train leave the station and, and very quickly get to its destination. 